Theodore Roosevelt. This man was one of the greatest American presidents. He fought at San Juan Hill, laid plans for the Panama Canal, and rode wild broncos in the Badlands. What else did this man do, and how does it continue to affect us today? On October 27, 1858, a boy was born to Theodore and Martha Roosevelt. They named him Theodore Roosevelt, Jr. Theodore, Jr., or T.D., was a sickly boy who suffered from severe asthma attacks. His body was in such awful condition that his health usually confined him to home. Eventually, Teddy decided he had had enough of his weak body and decided to begin working out. His family built a gym at their home and he began to improve his condition steadily. He did every physical activity he could find, from a local boxing championship to a hunting trip in Egypt. He changed rapidly, going from a timid homebound boy to an aggressive, fit athlete within a few short years. Teddy's life went on. He went to Harvard, he got married, and he moved into his own house. Soon he decided to try his hand at politics. When he joined the local Republican club, he was warned by his friends that politicians were low people and they had no place there. But he went on anyway. He was quickly recognized by the local party bosses as a potential candidate for state assemblyman. Despite the fact that he drastically opposed their machine and their policies, they loved him so much that they nominated him anyway. Teddy defeated his Democratic opposition in a landslide and was now on the scene of New York politics. Just as he was getting his political career in line, tragedy struck. On February 14, 1884, Roosevelt's mother and wife both died within hours of each other. Stricken by grief, Teddy looked for something to take his mind off of his loss. He needed something respectable that provided both physical activity and rewarding pay. It didn't take him long to find the perfect getaway, ranching in the Badlands. Theodore packed his bags, bought a ranch, and headed west. When he arrived, he was greeted with a pretty frosty reception. The local cowboys did not take a liking to the nearsighted New York politician. However, he soon earned their respect through acts of western toughness, including capturing three criminals single-handedly, taking them 40 miles to the nearest sheriff's office, and forcing them at gunpoint to reenact the story for his new camera. Eventually, Teddy returned from the West. He had gotten over his grief by ranching. Theodore remarried and soon returned to politics, participating in several campaigns and eventually winding up on the Civil Service Commission, a powerful government group meant to fight corruption. However, his job was not very powerful and he found himself unable to deal with so many important problems that he felt had to be addressed. Around a year later, Teddy took a job as the police commissioner of New York. He moved back to the Big Apple and soon became one of the greatest commissioners it had ever had. He began a bicycle patrol and installed a police communications network, revolutionizing the city law enforcement. However, the most interesting aspect of this job was his night patrolling making sure no officers were slacking or taking bribes. Legend has it, he even chased down and caught one of his men at midnight for being drunk. Later, Theodore became Assistant Secretary of the Navy, and a turbulent time. War against Spain was on the rise. The Spanish, rulers of Cuba, were committing horrible crimes against the locals, and American journalists inflated the stories even further. The public, horrified by the cruelty, were ready for war with Spain, and Teddy was leading the charge. Soon, he got his wish. The war began, and Theodore was made the leader of the Rough Riders, a group of mounted volunteers who would serve on the ground in Cuba. However, there was a problem. There was no boat scheduled to take them there. So, Teddy quickly scheduled for a train to take them to the port, they boarded another army unit's boat, and they took it to Cuba. When the Rough Riders reached Cuba, they got right into the battle. The much-needed troops helped take both San Juan Hill and Kettle Hill, proving major steps toward an American victory. Teddy went from being popular to being a national hero, well-loved enough to be president someday. Sure enough, he rose up the ranks very fast after returning home. 
He was elected as governor of New York, and a few years later he became vice president under William McKinley. He was content with his position and made the most of it. However, soon tragedy struck. McKinley was shot by an anarchist, leaving Teddy as his next in line to the presidency. Roosevelt accepted the position and began his administration. He did too much in his presidency to cover it all, but I'll attempt to sum it up. Horrified by the harmful things put into food, he passed a bill leading to the creation of the Food and Drug Administration in 1906. Teddy arranged for the construction of the Panama Canal in 1904, making it incredibly easy for sailors to go through the American continent. Theodore also passed the Antitrust Act, breaking up companies that grew too large and wiped out competition. He also won the Nobel Peace Prize and coined the term muckraker. After his second term ended in 1909, Teddy refused to step out of the spotlight. His good friend and protege, William Howard Taft, was elected the next president. Teddy continued to make public appearances as well, and he even started his own political party, the Bull Moose Progressives. However, his fame slowly faded. He died quietly on January 6, 1919, at his estate Sagamore Hills. As you may know, the teddy bear was named after Roosevelt. After he had refused to kill a baby bear on a hunting trip, a cartoonist heard about the story and published it in a newspaper. The story spread, and a New York toy maker decided to name his stuffed bears after Teddy, calling it a teddy bear. Of course, it's still a hit. The teddy bear isn't Roosevelt's only remaining legacy. His face is on Mount Rushmore, he was posthumously given the Medal of Honor, and he was even played by the late Robin Williams in the Night at the Museum movies. This president did great things in his life, and his legacy is here to stay. Thanks for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed.